Hi, this is Roger Moore, and you're listening to James Bond Radio. Hello, 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 and welcome to James Bond Radio. We are, we are joined by Mr. J.W. himself, John Williams. John, how are you today? I'm doing fantastic, Brian. This is uh, quite an exciting moment here to be on JBR and to be talking about James Bond's clothes. Oh, uh, God, th- yeah. This is a first. This is a first. I don't know that I've ever done this. Uh, you know, yeah, <laughs> I've, done it. I'm, I'm, I've done it everywhere else. I just haven't done it here. <laughs> no, I'm so not thrilled to be with to you this. today and thrilled to be with the JBR family talking about the highs and the lows of uh, 007's underwear, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There's so much to talk about as well, isn't there, with, with, with Bond clothing and the style of Bond and why it's had that appeal over the years. Um, there's so much to discuss. My name's Bond. James Bond. Bond. James. Bond, what do you think you're doing? Evening the British and up, sir. Welcome to James Bond Radio. News, reviews, and discussion of all things 007. Oh, down, 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 down. Do you expect me to talk? No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to Where do we begin? We've got to begin, obviously, at the beginning at Dr. No. And um, when you look back and you look back at the style and influence that Terence Young brought to the series, uh, I just think Connery's look in that very first outing is just sublime, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's been well documented that Terrence Young was the one who knocked Connery into shape with the clothes and all the gear and whatnot. And um, I, I often, you know, they always talk about how Terrence Young was James Bond. And if you watch like the, you know, the inside Dr. No documentary on the Blu-ray, you really, you know, get a feel for the fact that he's out there with champagne in his camp collar pink shirt you know, living, living at large, living like Bond. And so, I, you know, he, to me, is always the unsung hero of the James Bond films and the James Bond look, um, yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, Terrence is just, he's just a man. So um, um, I think that is a good place to start. Dr. No, Terrence Young, um, the Anthony Sinclair conduit suit, all that good stuff, which I, I, I own. <laughs> I own one of them. Oh, nice one. Yeah, nice. yes, yeah. Yeah, uh, I just think that his his whole look in that film is is uh, they got it right from the get go, and uh, I think that the whole um, Connery's look in the Les Ambassadors Club uh, is in, in that opening line, of course, is just so it just looks just looks the business from 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 the word go. It really does. I mean, it looks like it just. I mean, the clothes are just so beautifully tailored. I must admit, and you know, for everyone out there. Brian and I are just two two dudes who like clothes. We are not the authority on James Bond's clothing. This is not the oral history of the clothing of James Bond. There are plenty of places you can find that. We just wanted to geek out and talk about clothes. And in doing so, I'd like to bring up some things that, I don't know, make me laugh. For for example, uh, he, he's in desperate need of a lint brush. <laughs> <laughs> See, next time you watch Dr. No in high definition, somebody get this man a lint brush, for God's sake. Uh, outside of which, he does look the business, you know? Um, yeah. it, it's a beautiful tuxedo that's really never gone out of fashion, you know? No, I mean, it looks yeah. as good today as it did in, what, 1960, 61? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think even the rest of his look throughout that film. Uh, even just the, the you know the the, the polo shirts that, that he has uh, towards you know towards the climax of the film, it it all it all just looks impeccable. Uh, yeah. you, don't, you know it's it's one of those films that's aged so well that uh, you, you can look back on that and just think um, that look is still you know uh, relevant today. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I'd love to show up in Jamaica in, in that badass suit, but you would be sweating balls. <laughs> you know seriously i mean as much as i'd love to think about getting off that plane in jamaica cruising through the airport and that beautiful gray suit and tie oh my god you would be so hot and i love it when he gets back to his hotel room and there's no like air condition you know like 
that's how you're sleeping. Oh my yeah. God. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, he looks, he looks amazing in it. Um, um, and I'm, I'm a huge fan of the blue on blue. I mean, I wish I was cool enough to rock that. And I have, I noticed later in life uh, in my own personal um, um, look, I guess I had to choose my words wisely there. Uh, like I'm doing blues on blues, not quite the baby blue on baby blue, but, yeah, um, right. um, you know, I, he does, he just, I mean, you, you gotta be Sean Connery to wear baby blue on baby blue, you know, and, and still, you know, pull hot chicks on the beach. <laughs> well, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and I don't think there's any kind of fashion faux pas that's ended the series yet. We, you know, I know we're still on we're still on the original film, but by by this stage, I think Terence Young puts so much effort into maintaining that look throughout the film that there's that there's not one incident I, that I recall that where where Bond doesn't look you know a million dollars. Absolutely, um, everything is just spot on. Uh, I'm, I'm now running through like everything he wore in that film. I mean, even like at the end when he's all, his clothes are all ripped up, you know, he looks so cool. And I love that, that, that sort of bronzy brownish uh, silk, you know, uh, uh, like, like, I guess it's Chinese fashion jacket. I don't know the name of that, that style of jacket, but you know, even at dinner with Dr. No, he still looks so cool. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, it's the the Nehru jacket, isn't it? Yeah. Is that, oh, that that's it. Yes, yes. Apologies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that <laughs> that looks. Yeah, that looks uh, stunning, stunning. Yeah, I mean, you know, to be able to wear all that, maybe it was different because it was the '60s. But can you imagine, like, headed out into the night wearing that? Oh. I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I actually bought one of those back in the day. I must. Confess. What? Yeah. Was it the I '80s, thought... late '80s, or what was yeah, happening? Yeah, there you, you go. You got it. It was the eighties, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just thought I've got to have that look. It, that that look that look was just imprinted on my mind, and I yeah. thought a black jacket in exactly that cut, and I, I probably looked, you know, an absolute fool in it. But I I just thought I looked a million dollars in it. It really well, did. I think you need to post a photo of you back in the day, <laughs> your, your your Roxy Music era. You know. Oh, well, you, you <laughs> Yeah, you've got it. You've, it's exactly what it was. Yeah, I'll have to. I'll have to. Oh, the Brian Ferry years. Um, yeah, you, I hear you. You've got it. You, you got it. You've got that's, it. That's 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 interesting. That's cool though, man. Well, I, I, well, I, well I, here's I, a bit of trivia. Funny enough, John Brian Ferry went to the same school as myself. No that's way. Like, Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, I'm serious. There's a bit of trivia. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that that was completely unrehearsed as well. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Wow, I had no idea. Uh, yeah. For people out there, uh, Brian Ferry is the uh, singer of a band called Roxy Music, and trust me, uh, there's a couple of their songs. One in particular, who's been covered, that's been covered by everyone, including No Doubt. If you heard it, you'd know it. But they definitely had a sort of posh, dressed up. They were kind of like a nicer dressed version of Duran Duran. Maybe is that would that be a fair? Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. That's Thank you. Fair yes but you're but you're going circling back to bond you're right i mean there's nothing out of place in this film that he wore there's nothing that looks you know truly dated there's nothing that you look back at and you go damn i don't know about that um so i think we're giving dr no high marks yep indeed indeed they started off so well and so strongly with that one so so moving on now to from russia and obviously we've got the same director so we've got a lot of the same styles and influences and um, again, uh, Sean just looks the business throughout this. Now I know he's he's you know very much um, wearing uh, the um, uh, the DJ for most of this uh, film, but there's no there's no particular era, you know time when I can think that he doesn't look out of place in this one either. No, I mean you know when I talk about or think about the fashion of from Russia with Love, I mean it's 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 so classic. You know, and um, um, he just looks great in all the suits. The thing that I want to burn time talking about is the sunglasses in the mosque. Yeah. I remember being a little kid looking at my mom going like, that guy is really cool. Look at those sunglasses. Yeah. And, you know, again, it's been talked about, but it, it really feels like those are women's sunglasses that he just grabbed off somebody, you know, totally. and he just looks so cool. So like fashion forward. Um, um, and I just, I, when I see that scene of him in the mosque wearing those cat glasses, 
that yeah. pretty much is the coolest guy of all time. I mean, no I, one can do that. Totally. I, I think it was clearly a, a bit of a fashion thing at the time because if you, th those glasses are so very similar to um, Felix's in Dr. No. Oh, that's with, right. From, from, from Jack Lord, because he obviously, you know, it was very obviously very much a style style thing at the time i think that but yes i, I remember thinking that they, they do look like ladies glasses it's almost like he took them off of jackie o's face or something you know <laughs> like um but i love i love there's something about connor i mean you know we'll get to it here in a second uh, obviously everyone talks about the gray three-piece suit I, I think the you know the dark navy uh suit that he wears in um the end of from russia and and i believe correct me if i'm wrong as he's getting the dv5 there's just something about that dark blue navy suit with the the the, the, blue, the dark blue tie i just yeah. love that it looks so clean and so classic and so elegant and it's something that i feel like every man should wear when i was getting the conduit uh suit from dave mason i went with the dark blue um i just it's it, it, it has to be owned. It has to be in every man's closet. So tell me, tell me the story of that, John. So when you went, you went when you went to get that uh, suit fitted. Well, how did well I will, I will. It's kind of a funny story. Uh, uh, Dave, Dave Mason of um, Mason and Sons, Anthony Sinclair, comes through major cities and you know gets a hotel room for the day in the airport. And I went out to LAX and and I'd met him once before in London. I've got some shirts and ties and whatnot, but I was getting the suit made for me and went with my girlfriend at the time. And as he was, as he was giving me, you know, like uh, altering and fitting the pants, he handed it to me and I walked into the bathroom, put on the pants, came back out. When I came back out, D Dave Mason and my girlfriend were laughing hysterically. And I thought I had something, you know, my fly undone, what's going on here? And they, Dave just looks at me and says, you know, uh, JW, this is the one room you can drop your pants in, in front of your tailor and your girlfriend. <laughs> I went into the bathroom because I, I don't know, I was shy or it was second nature. And they, they both, they both had a right go at me because that apparently is the room you can take your pants down, drop your pants in, your tailor and your girlfriend. So, um, it's, it's a beautiful suit. Um, it's, uh, it, you know, when I, whenever I've worn it, you feel, it feels like much more rooted in a classic, like cut and feel it doesn't you know it doesn't feel like some sort of fashion forward i mean it feels uh very traditional very lovely but you know it's it's definitely a suit worn on a certain occasion yeah um, yeah i understand yeah so it's you know it was an exciting day to finally own that suit for sure uh -oh. which i put on the other day and was a little loose <laughs> so I was thr <laughs> I was right. thr yeah i was awesome. thrilled about that yeah, um, nice. Yeah. Oh, so anyway, uh, I'm, I'm well jealous of that. Well jealous of that. I haven't got round to getting the suit yet. Yeah. Very but, cool. Uh, Speaking yeah. of suits, Goldfinger, the most iconic suit in history, maybe outside of Cary Grant and North by Northwest. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. The the, the Glen Check classic three piece gray suit. I adore this look. I absolutely adore this look. Uh, I mean, for, for for me, you know, I'm going to say it right off the get go. This is my favorite look from Connery. I think he just pulls this off so well. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's it's arguably, yeah, I mean, everyone loves it. I, I often sometimes wonder what is it about that suit that everyone went crazy for? How did that suit become the iconic suit that it is? I really don't know, but God, does he look good in it? Yeah. It really, really does look good in that. It just it, the, the the fit, the tailoring, the 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 style of that check. Um, oh yeah, it, it's it's just it's just timeless. Every 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 time every time I see that film and look at that, I just think you know that that's that that would go on forever. That's that style. Love yeah, it. it it really is. I mean, the minute you see it, it's like probably the most identifiable piece of clothing in the entire franchise, maybe next to the, the blue onesie. Um, <laughs> Just, yeah, I mean, yeah. is that, okay, hang on. Have we hit our first uh, 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 fashion like train wreck? I mean, is yeah, that I think you're probably right there. I think that that was a bit of a misstep. Uh, I, I, I don't recall that being a, a thing of the, t of the time, but uh, that really, really doesn't work, does yeah. it? I mean, it's, I mean uh, it's it's cut so high. The rise is just like, how does he even sit down in that thing comfortably? 
And, you know, we'll, again, we'll get to it with some of the short swim trunks and whatnot in um, Thunderball, like that, that like five inch rise. I mean, you, how uncomfortable is I got to be, in it? especially for a tall guy, I'm six two. So I'm kind of tall and I'm, I'm a little self-conscious about putting certain shorts on just because I'm kind of yeah. long, my legs are kind of long. And I think it looks weird, but Connery's what, six, four or something. I don't know how tall he is. But, you know, to be wearing those little short shorts and then to sit down, that's really got to like, you know, open up the, uh, you know, it just, it's, it's just got to, it's just, you're going to hit the high notes with that. It's time to, you know, like, yeah. how does he do it? I mean, again, I guess it's just a testament to, you know, the swagger of Connery. Yeah, completely. I mean, I don't know if he quite pulls that off, but there's there's only one person who could have pulled that off, and that's Connery. Yeah. I think anybody else just would have looked ridiculous. But I mean, uh, it's it's certainly it's certainly a point in the series where you think mm, that was a little bit of a questionable taste. Yeah, but um, it's you know he so, still sort of half pulls it off, I think. But um, totally, but, I I love the the I got to admit to when he's doing the sneaky bond around. Goldfinger's factory, the yeah. sort of long sleeve uh, polo, uh, black polo and the black slacks and, and black shoes. I think that's also a really cool look. Yeah, um, absolutely. And of course, the, the you know, the pre-titles with the, the, the white in the jacket, the red carnation, um, that, that just, that's just timeless. I, I love it to this day. Absolutely. I stand corrected. Hang on a second. I want to correct myself on something on the Goldfinger. It was a, 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 a black polo and then a V-neck sweater over the top of it. Oh, yes, yes. I know, I know okay. what you mean. Yes. And I know that because I, I had to refinance my home and I bought the the that set from uh, N. Peel. And oh, wow. um, I've spent some money on some clothes in my lifetime. I'm going, that, I don't know about that. You know, like that has a lot of money and I'm not entirely convinced, but I will say that that black V-neck silk cashmere blend Goldfinger sweater is probably the nicest feeling thing I've ever had on my body. That's not entirely true. <laughs> but I, you know, clothing wise, that is yeah. something that feels so good. And every time I wear it, Brian, I, my yeah. whole body just feels opulent. Oh, that's good. Um, that's good to hear. That yeah, I call it my first date sweater. <laughs> right, right. So, oh. so, but Connery looks the business dressed in all black, sneaking around, you know. Yeah, und undoubtedly, undoubtedly. Again, I don't. Apart from that, the 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 Terry Towling outfit, I don't think there's a misstep. Yeah. Throughout the rest of that film, um, he just just looks the business. But certainly, the three pieces, the standout for me, I think there. Yeah, absolutely. I love the scene in uh, Catch Me If You Can where uh, DiCaprio's like, are you sure this is the suit? And he's getting fitted for the, the Goldfinger suit oh, yeah, yeah, with yeah. the tailor. I think that's when he, he made all the money. That's what he bought. I thought that was hysterical. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a good, good scene. Good scene. Totally. So, so moving on to Thunderball, what, what, what's, your, what's your feelings on, on Bond's sort of <sighs> Again, you know, the, the Bahamas blue on blue, um, you know, in the hat. I mean, he's just rocking it. Um, the white short shorts, obviously, uh, the hot pink camp collar T-shirt, or excuse me, uh, not T-shirt, shirt. The, 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 it's a strange thing whenever he gets to uh, Largo's uh, house where he's in the blue and white striped uh, camp collar shirt and sort of the, the yeah, stone yeah. khakis and he's wearing like some sort of sandal <laughs> and I always think yes yes I, you know it's like Chewbacca's paws I don't want to see <laughs> Bond in sandals you know I don't want to see Chewbacca's paws either yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Um, you know and uh, uh, but I, I, and this is my favorite Bond film and you know I've talking to some of the Bond community I, I, I think you know from a clothing standpoint, especially the way, you know, OB comes out with all the lines, it's the most, I think, I don't want to use the word iconic, but the, 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 the most stolen from that works, you know, um, I think yeah. there was a line a couple of seasons ago that OB did of, um, that was just, it felt like it was the, the entire wardrobe for Thunderball. And it, um, it, to me, uh, the most enduring, the most lasting, perhaps, of, of all the clothes. Um, yeah. 
you know, and love all the tropical colors. And it just, as a man who lives in a tropical environment, um, I, I really enjoy the, the overall look of Connery um, yeah. in this film. What about you? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I, I agree with all of that. I, th I think um, there's, there's certain films you, you, you kind of, when you think it, when you're thinking of them, you think of a certain look. And for me, it's, it's that exactly what you just said, the dusty pink shirt in, in, in Nassau. I just think he pulls that off uh, really well. Um, the, the, this again, it's it, it's another Terence Young film, and it's very very difficult to pick any any spot out where he doesn't look a million dollars in it. I, I, I'm I'm with you on the sandals. I think that's a that's a disaster, but it, it, he just looks just looks so strong throughout it. Absolutely, I, I think that. Um... If I could have like an entire wardrobe from one film, it would probably be this one. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I'm trying to think what else. God, I'm, my mind is racing now on all the clothes in this film. Um, de definitely, definitely overall my favorite. And, we're, you know, as we move into the next film, um, as much as I have a, this film in, uh, as a special place in my heart, I don't know how crazy I am about the fashion of You Only Live Twice. <laughs> yeah 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 uh, i think i think from in, in twice things start to go a little bit south here don't they really um uh, my, uh, override, my overriding memory of you only live twice from a certainly from a fashion point of view is the black and white shoes the spats oh yeah and, and i and every time i see that i just think that's i, I actually don't mind the look but I just think it's just so unbond like it just doesn't doesn't yeah. work for me on that one. Totally. It just it, it, the cut of all the clothing, it's starting to look a little bit more boxy. It's a, uh, it's it's less tailored to me. It looks more off the rack. And I just, yeah. you know, like with all of this, I always try to remind myself, well, you know, it was a sign of the times that swing in 60s. They, they were coming out of it. It was moving into a different, you know, an era, you know, yeah. fashion was as it always does, it was evolving. And when I look at it, I go, God, Connery just doesn't, you know, these clothes, uh, it's amazing to me. They're, they're not very, very Bondian, um, yeah. um, um, you know, and some of the colors are sort of drab. Um, yeah, it's definitely not, uh, I don't know. It's just, it's jarring compared to everything that's come before. Yeah, I think so. I think so as well. I think obviously, you know, as you quite rightly say, different times, different director. We're moving into a, the later 60s, and I think it becomes a little bit of a mishmash almost of different styles. And uh, and I think I think you're certainly right. There's less there's less tailored clothing. They're a little bit more loose fit, and I think um, it adds up to a bit of a bit of a mismatch. Um, Absolutely, my, my my favorite, honestly. And I often thought this would be really cool for Daniel and seeing him in his uh, naval uniform. Uh, yeah. you know, th that to me, Connery looked really cool in that. It was nice to yeah. sort of see him in that. Um, when he gets out of permission to come aboard and he gets out of the yeah. tube, you know, uh, he, he just, he looks so cool. Yeah, absolutely. And, and as you say, it, 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 I think if Daniel misses a trick in no time to die with, with, with that look, then I think we've, we've, we've been uh Unfortunately, left down on that one. One day we'll know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One day we will. One know. day uh, coming absolutely. soon. Absolutely. All right. So we're, yeah. Moving on to uh, George's uh, uh, film with Honor Majesty Secret Service. What's your feelings on this one, John? Well, you know, I I I, I have to say it, and uh, uh, I, you know, George is not only is he just a really good looking guy, but as a model, if you look at him and you look at his body, I think he's got. At that point in his life, he had a body that clothes looked really good on, you know, yeah, um, he just his his physique lent itself to men's tailoring. And just from the opening sequence, the pleated tuxedo shirt. I mean, that thing yeah. is beyond tailored to him. I mean, yeah. it looks unbelievable. He looks so good in that shirt. You can kind of see underneath it, you know, how how, how his body's cut and, and um, he just wears it. He's so confident in it. And, um, you know, I love that. It looks great in the tux with the ruffles. Um, yeah. Not crazy about, 
you know, his Hillary Bray outfit and that sort of uh, brownish sweater that he seems to be rocking when he's escaping. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, you know, clothes just look fantastic on Lazenby, full stop. Yeah, yeah I agree. The, the, that shirt, as you say at the start, I mean, how tight is that shirt on him? Yeah. <laughs> It's just uh, he rocks that look so well. There's a couple of others out, outstanding f- for me. Quarter deck, and he has the the classic. It's almost very Roger esque actually, with, with with the blazer, the grey trousers, and uh, I think he looks really stylish there. And also the um, when he's um, uh, in with as just before he's he's disguised as Sir Hillary with the blue pinstripe suit he has. Oh yeah. Yes, and, uh, and I think that really works as well because we. I think previously that we haven't really seen a pinstripe, and a, but I think I think he pulls that off really well. Totally, you're absolutely right. That's a that is a gorgeous suit on him, which again lending itself to the times as we're rolling into the '70s, and you know, as you know, the, the hippie movement's taking over and all that kind of stuff. I mean, to see that sort of tailoring looks amazing. Um, um, you know, George definitely is very comfortable in clothing. And, you know, when they talk about, you know, you wearing the suit, not the suit wearing you, um, um, and I've seen people in the bond community, you know, wear a suit and all that. And, you know, you, you, it's like, they're like myself included, like, like kind of stiff in it, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and, and Lazenby's just got the swagger, you know, he just wears the suit. Um, yeah. So no, I'm definitely a fan of of the fashion of this film. Yep, yep, uh, I'd go along with you on that. I think, uh, as you say, apart from some of the the beiges and some of the oranges, yeah, the the, the rest really works. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, totally. Well, I mean, and now we're going into what might be the apex of fashion <laughs> <laughs> of the entire series. My one of my favorite films is certainly for the fashion. Um. Diamonds are forever. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you lead that one, John. Go oh, on. <laughs> wait a minute. I just set you up. I just <laughs> set you up just a slam dunk. That was a big alley-oop right there. I, this is the definition of so bad, it's good. Um, you know, it is just dreadful. Um, yeah. um, um, you know, we're starting to see a lot more uh, pockets and flaps and stuff and buttons. Uh, everything's starting to increase on terry yeah. cloth. And, um, um, uh, you know, again, back to the browns and, and orange turtlenecks. And um, I mean, it's just an, it's, it's truly crazy. But I got to say, I'll never get tired of looking at it and thinking about it and now talking about it. The, the, the short pink tie. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the I mean, standout. The standout. What the life. fuck yeah. was someone thinking? I mean, this is the year I was born. It's my birth year bond. It's my local bond. I, I, yeah. I looked at a, a, a condo the other day, and you looked out the window, the kitchen of the window. It, the yeah. windows are on the top, and it looked right at the Elrod house. Oh wow! And I was just looking up at it. It was basically the road that you travel on that Burke's. Burt Baxby got shot on you know, oh, he's behind yeah. the rock and they're shooting down yeah. the hill. And, Fantastic. and it, that road, Araby in Palm Springs is the road that this house was on. And I was looking at oh. it and looking up and I was kind of looking at my friend and going, am I, I, I might just have to buy this. Cause like, that's the Elrod house. And I just, what was going on though, in the world where uh, we're going to put you in as bright pink of a tie and we're going to make it about six inches short from your waistline. It should be two <laughs> inches. I'm a big believer in that. Two yeah. inches. The bottom of the tie is two inches from the top yeah. of your pant. Yeah. And um, it's funny. First season of Mad Men, they, there was someone who was hired with a ruler that was, okay. would go around and measure everyone's, the bottom of their tie to the top of their pant. That's how serious they were about wow. capturing that period. But I mean... What what do you think's happening here? Is this a joke? Was someone? I mean, was that really like the thing? Uh, I think there's so many reasons. Maybe I think it, it maybe it's it's obviously the budget on the film was was, was <laughs> you, 
was, I think that was eating up. Head of Woolworths. From, from, from Sean. <laughs> Um, it diff- the, the, the changing styles, the changing period. Um, uh, they certainly dropped the ball on this one, in, in, as far as styling goes. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't. There's there's not one sequence I can think of that he particularly looks the business in. Yeah. Uh, no, especially is- naked uh, on the bed. You know, oh, yeah. the, the hair, I, you know, a lot of people always could have, sort of like give Sean a hard time for being out of shape. I really think that whoever was dressing him, the, the you know, the, the costume designer or whoever it was, it was didn't do him any favors. No, and, and how how that, you know, I, I, it makes you kind of wonder whether Connery was just taking the piss. Because, I mean, yeah. someone laid that tie out for him. Someone put it on him. He was looking in the mirror and saw it. And he said, hell yeah, I'm going to rock this. Right? Yeah. Bond is back, baby. Could you make that tie a little shorter? And I'm not sure if it's right or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, completely. So uh, I don't know what went on there. It, really it, anyway, it, just, it lends itself to the film, to me, the, the campiness of the film, right? Yeah. Um, of course, the fashion has to be dreadful. It's 1971. You know, it's yeah. Las Vegas. Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, uh, I think the only the only redeeming feature that he pulls off, I think, is again is the white dinner jacket in the casino. I oh, think, yeah. The, yeah, you know that that's that's still a strong look on him. Although, although that that bow tie is quite quite large, he's got on there. But uh, the, the, the definitely started to drop the ball at this uh, this uh, period of time. I think. Which I guess when the film was being filmed, people just didn't wear that anymore. And I think, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, there's some of the outtakes, some of the deleted scenes where Sammy Davis is giving him a hard time for wearing that white dinner jacket. Yeah, you just absolutely. didn't do that back then. No, no, it was it was not the look, not the look to have. I, have you ever owned a white dinner jacket? I I still have a white yeah. dinner jacket, John. Love me it. Too. I, me too. Me too. Yeah. I absolutely love it. I, that, that gets worn whenever I get the opportunity. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I do like that look. I totally. Like that. I, so uh, so look so looking back on the obviously the Sean era, um, what's your what's your sort of standout standout look? Would you say Apex Sean Connery fashion moment? Yeah. Ooh. Oh gosh, I'm gonna. Ha- I mean, you got to go with Goldfinger, right? I mean, it just the three piece suit, which I would not wear a three piece suit. I'm just, I'm not. That's not my thing. I've never been drawn to it, but um, I mean, it is the definition of iconic. Yeah. Now I have, I, I've actually owned a couple of three piece suits. Really? I bet you look good in it, man. I don't. It just doesn't. On me, I look. It looks like it's gonna fall off me or something. I don't know. Like I don't. Oh right, it's a yeah. while since I bought one. I must confess, but um, I, I look the next suit I want to get. I want to get a three piece again. See, just, you as a man in London, you know, or in England, walking around in a three piece suit. I get that. Southern California, they think, you know, uh, yeah. I don't know. It just isn't. It's not something that's indigenous to this area. But I think yeah. it looks great. It looks. Yeah. It looks awesome. Yeah, no, I understand that totally, totally. Okay, so, so, so uh, I, I'm, I'm I'm in complete agreement with you there. Uh, I, Sean's looking Goldfinger is the standout one for me, without a shadow of a doubt. Totally. Um, so m- moving on now to the Roger Moore era, we're hitting Live and Let Die. What's your thoughts on this one, John? Um, uh, I'm always amazed. This film is so loved and revered by people. I mean, they just love it. Tom Sears loves it. Harris Thomas loves it. I mean, people love this film. It's one of my least favorite Roger films, to be completely okay. honest with you. I I knew that when we did the Music of Bond episode, and I had some some remarks about the soundtrack that were probably not... Uh, they were, I knew that I was going to end up getting some people were going to start throwing eggs at me. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And I feel that way about the clothes. I don't know. I feel like they were so like trying to do the op, making sure they did something that wasn't Connery from the fact that he was smoking cigars and drinking whiskey. It's like, they were just really trying to separate themselves from Connery. And I'm sure at the time that was the right thing to do, but you know, the black pants and the roll neck, the big, you know, 357 Magnum or whatever that gun is and the whole, it just yeah. doesn't, I'm just not crazy about it. it okay. it's, it's my least favorite uh, Roger. I mean, you know, I, I love the flares that are coming up. I love the safari suits, but for me, this one, you know, um, 
the double breasted suit he looks good in, you know, and stuff like that. I mean, he does look good. I mean, Roger looks fantastic. I'm just, I would say that I'm not, this is just not my, you know, favorite okay. look. I mean, I, I'm guessing you love it. Yeah, yeah, I was just about to say this is the first time that we've actually gone slightly apart here because uh, that makes for good I, podcasting, though. I, so I'm happy. I, 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 I absolutely love that look, uh, the, the the black roll neck sweater. Uh, I think he pulls that off so so well, and I, I also like the, the 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 kind of black overcoat and gloves look that he has at the Philly of Soul yeah. restaurant where when he first meets Mister Big. I think that also looks looks terrific. So. Um, yeah, I, I mean, looking back at, at Roger's tenure, it, it, that, that look to me is the one that really strikes out to me, the, the black roller next sweater. Really? Yeah, I don't know. It just looks it looks different. I feel like it's more of a uh, like a Steve McQueen bullet. You know, I don't know. It's it just a sign of the times. And this definitely is not my favorite fashion era. Yeah, no, it's a fair the- point. Yeah, yeah more, more, it's just, I don't know. It's not what I associate uh, Bond with. Like, if I was going to get one of the big Chief Studio uh, uh, figures, it wouldn't be of Roger and the Black Roll Neck. <laughs> right, right, okay. Have you seen okay. those things? They're incredible. Yeah, Especially the, the yeah. clothing. The clothing on him, Warren was, had them all, and he was showing me some of that, and I was going, God, the attention to detail as far as the clothing on those, 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 I was going to call them dolls, <laughs> uh, those figures is, is outstanding. It's, yeah. It's well, incredible. I, I was quite fortunate enough to go to the actual factory where they were made. What? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, it was, and the, the, the level of detail is just phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. And that there's so many, um, images that they take of that particular, of the character from various different yeah. angles. To make to make sure that they get the the look um, spot on, so it's uh, yeah no no that, that that's that's a uh, very good point. Yeah, right on. Well, I know it's 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 well loved. People love live and let die, and they love the fashion. I don't it just doesn't something. Oh, this is a hole. We're going down a rabbit hole. It just doesn't feel like a Bond movie to me. And I know I, I can. People are just igniting flamethrowers right now. I just, yeah, I don't I'm, know. I'm one of them. I know, I know. That's why I'm glad that this is audio yeah. only. I just yeah. don't, I just, it just isn't, it just doesn't, I love it. Don't get me wrong. Okay. I love it. Um, but I just don't get, it just doesn't do it for me. The okay. way that, yeah. Yeah. It's, it, my, it's, it's my, it's my least favorite. Um, it's my least favorite uh, Roger film. Really? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, it, it's. It, I think it's my second favorite of his. So that's, really. That's, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Different. This is what makes the world a beautiful place. Well, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So it, 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 I know. It's, again, we're sidetracking there, but is it, in terms of the music of Bond, is, is that is that your? Do you, are you not a fan of this George Martin soundtrack? I mean, listen. I love it with all my life. That said, it's. Yeah. Um, I'm not. It sounds like the same song over and over to me. Okay. I think it's like, you know, the art of Liechtenstein. He does one thing really great. And I feel like that's George Martin. And I mean, I really, and honestly, I've grown to love it. I like it much more now than I did when I recorded the, um, the, that particular episode, which was many years ago. Um, I have, I have uh, grown to love it more, but um, no, it's, it's not up there for me. Okay. Um, Yeah. Yeah. We better move on to the next film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. I mean, man with the golden gun. Now you're talking my language. You know, the flares are getting wider. We're getting greens and whites. And I'm just loving this on safari, Roger. I feel like Roger in this film is really coming into his, to the true Roger look. Yeah. Yeah. You know? okay. okay. I feel like, okay, Roger like, might have picked these clothes out himself. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can see that. And then, now, yeah. now, strangely, I don't think he looks good as good in this film as he did in the previous one. Personally, what like fashion-wise or physically? Fashion-wise, okay. It's um, it's a it's a little bit kind of uh, like a hangover from diamonds, a little bit. Maybe yeah. it's a Guy Hamilton thing. I don't know. Oh, that's interesting. It's a Guy Hamilton thing. But it just seems a little. There's a, there's a few clashes. There's a few kind of. Um, striped jackets that I just like kind of like, <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it like with, 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 
bit, bit there's kind of reds in them they're very flary the very yeah. oh, I don't, see don't know. I, yeah i like those things that are just unapologetic you know it's just it's right. like let's take it to the wire you're right if i was going to land a plane uh on the islands of phuket i don't know if i would have chose that jacket combination I, I i'm glad he took it off when it was time for the battle um <laughs> the duel you know what i mean yeah yeah, I, I I I know what you mean about the the sort of classic safari jacket type look, but mm, this this just leaves me a little bit little bit cold. This look. I Got think. it. Well, I feel I know what you mean. I'm not dispelling that. There's no doubt about it. It's ridiculous. Uh, I just feel like he's coming into his own, and and um, you know I feel like that's what Bond would wear if he was in um um in Thailand. I'm not sure so sure if he was in San Monique, aka Jamaica. Uh, he would be wearing the black roll neck. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a fair point. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, hey, look, it's Roger. We love him. He looks fantastic. And I feel like this film, more so than maybe Live and Let Die, is setting up, you know, for next several films, if not all of them. Yeah, yeah. Indeed, um, indeed. So, and then I guess, you know, as moving on to Spy Who Loved Me, I mean, this is the one where, you know, universally, everyone says Roger looks the best. Mm -hmm. I mean, in a double-breasted jacket, the man looks amazing. Yeah, yeah. I think I think they, they got it right with this one as well, yeah. generally. Totally. Uh, I, I love it how with the gun barrels, like you can always tell what gun barrel it is from the, the how wide the flare is on the bottom <laughs> of this pad, you know? <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, it's true, though, isn't it? It's true, but uh, yeah, no, I, I, th I think he, that, that. I mean, obviously, the the cut of the suit is very, very different to what what we'd had previously, but I, th but I think, uh, it, yeah, he, he rocks that look. It, 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 it's, it's certainly, well, actually, I've got to mention as well, of course, the uh, the banana yellow suit at the beginning of the free oh, yeah. time. I mean, yeah. that's 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 such a strong look, isn't it? Yeah, he's he's definitely a fan of color. Yeah, old Bond. Um, yeah, and I'd love to see Daniel get a little, you know, b banana yellow, uh, um, you know, baby blues. Yeah, you're right. No, he's definitely um, a, a man who's confident in his ways when he's picking out his his ski jumpsuit. <laughs> he was in the store yeah. and he said, "Hey, I'm gonna rock this." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you have me, a yeah. red hat on just to make yeah. sure nobody, nobody misses me you know yeah, yeah oh indeed. god good times yeah um, I'm just I, I, I think thinking. also on the boat you know and and his dinner jacket and whatnot i mean you know he just he looks really comfortable in his clothing yeah um this yeah. this could be you know in all fairness because spies a whole nother conversation I feel like this is the best clothing wise. This is his Thunderball, right? Where across the board, all the clothes in this film look fantastic on Roger. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess I'd go along with that, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it's, um, it's worth, you know, a bit like what you were saying with You Only Live Twice, that he rocks the commander suit. And, yeah. uh, you know, obviously at, at the, um, the La Paris battle. And I think uh, it's good to see him in the naval uniform again. Totally. I mean, just, and just kicking ass too. You know, he's not, it's not just the cameo. I mean, he's, he's a full on action hero. Yeah. Yeah. Bro. Definitely yeah, he, works. Yeah. He, he, you can totally see him being a higher up in the Navy. Like had he not been an actor, I think that's what Roger would have done. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. I can totally say that. Well, speaking of flares, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the most outrageous. I mean, first off, when it comes to Moonraker, I, I love the posters of him in the silver uh, spacesuit, right? I mean, there's yeah. just something so ridiculous about that and so wonderful. And when you're a young boy, I mean, seeing Bond in, in, a, in a shiny silver space suit is pretty much the coolest thing of all time oh i'm totally with you i mean as a kid i remember seeing those posters and thought oh my god you know this is so cool because james bond's actually going into space i was so down with it i thought it was just the business yeah 
so there's two there's two outstanding looks that I that when I think of this film and I think of, of Roger in the in the in the white roll neck it, on the plane at the beginning of the pre-titles, um, uh, and I think Roger being Roger pulls that off well. And Absolutely. Also, and also later on with um, with uh, Doctor Holly Goodhead, he has the the, the black shirt. Um, just a black shirt, black trousers look, and I think again that that really works for Roger. Just a yeah. simple look. Yeah, yeah, totally. I, I think so too. I mean, I think there's a certain um, 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 style to this film that um, it's got a good look to it. You know, um, yeah. it, it 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 works for the film. Um, I love some of the, like the, the, I guess it's black and it's, he's got the huge collar and it's kind of like a, it, the, the slit is down to his, you know, able, I mean, he just, he just looks like a player, right? You know, I mean, he just looks, he just looks yeah. like he's all business. I mean, I love the tweed jacket and the brown tie when he's, you know, uh, yeah. out shooting skeet. Um, um, again, I think that the, the yellow, uh, jumpsuits when they get to the space station he looks super cool in as well um, um yeah i mean it's just it's just classic roger moore yeah yeah i mean yeah. this is i think this is a film that when you think of roger moore you, you kind of think about what he's wearing in uh in moonraker yeah I'd, I'd go along with that i'd go along with that entirely yeah um good stuff yeah so, for your eyes only, what's your thoughts on that one? Now, this is my favorite. This was my okay. first. Um, I I must admit, I I I got it on sale. Ob had the sort of the blue uh, uh, polo that he wears. Um, um, I, I, I I like this film. I like the look of this film. Um, okay. I, I think that. Um, it's the one that's still the most stylish for me. I mean, when he's in the, the black jacket, you know, and he's running up the steps and whatnot to shoot at the yeah. car, you know that's what I mean? Like, like that, that looks like Daniel to me, like Daniel yeah. could rock that, you know, black on black jacket. And I believe it's a black, he's got a black sweater on like a roll neck or a mop turtle. Yeah. I, know the one um, you mean. Yep. I, I love seeing Roger and his tux pants and the tuck jacket out on the beach. Uh, excuse me, the tux shirt and the tux pants, you know, he just looks so cool. Um, um, I mean, the climbing outfit, Jesus Christ, the, that thick ass cable neck, cable uh, uh, sweater and the, the blue suede sort of patch vest. I mean, that's just rocking. Yeah, that, that, that's the, when I think of this film, that's the look that I, that I remember Roger in is the, the most, is that kind of, that, that, that blue, um, as you say, climbing Geely, I think it is with the with the cable sweater. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's such that I like that look. And, I think and, looks, and, looks and, yeah, man. I mean, the white shirt with kind of the the gray suede jacket. You know, as he's you know yeah. spying on Gonzalez or whatever. I mean, you know, he's just looking good. You know, yeah. um, looking very Elvis to me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, he looked he looked very much like Elvis. You know, like him personally. You know, with the hair and all that. And, kind yeah. of just look at the business and i love as always the double-breasted jacket when he he meets melina um, oh, um yes you yeah, know and, about that, and they yeah. they go out somewhere and they get some sort of fruit and he pulls out his handkerchief you know like i'm just going okay this guy is just he's got it all that's man. that that look is just is very very roger moore isn't it it he's, is not so much bond but more roger himself and uh, i think uh, that's a very good, good very good point actually Totally. And then, okay, let's talk about the blue ski jacket, you know, I'll buy you an ice cream. Um, yeah, he's, yeah. he, he looks great there. You know, I, I, I'm really enjoying the fashion of Fear Eyes Only. I, now that I'm, I'm um, thinking it over, I think this might be my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. I, the, the, the more I think of those scenes, I think it's gone a little bit higher for me as well. Actually. Christ, I might have to put this film on tonight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so well, since I've watched it. And, well. and this is really, you know, from a, again, iconic of him and the tux on the poster between the legs. I mean, you know, that Roger pose 
is kind of the one, right? I mean, it's the one that like, there's always an illustration of somewhere. So yeah. Um, um, blue V-neck uh, t-shirt too, when he's you know, being pulled overboard. I dig oh, it. Yeah, of course, I think yes. they, just, they just yeah. nailed it with this film. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. I, I again, uh, I can't disagree with that. I think this is some some good looks there. Good looks there. In, in sharp contrast to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the clown suit. I guess that's the the standout one for Octopussy. But I mean, there's two ways to look at that clown suit. Like he looks like a clown. Okay, like that's one you know one way of looking at it. But how cool do you have to be to put on that clown? suit with the straight face and like diffuse a bomb and you know and take the scene seriously i mean that's a skill set that is indigenous to roger moore i mean no one could do that yeah. you know it's a testament to this man i think the skill set is how quickly he manages to get in that caravan and get the thing on <laughs> yeah that is it no doubt about it he's 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 quick on the move um yeah, definitely. it is an odd choice that you know our film and Connery's back. We're going toe to toe. Here's what we're gonna do, guys. Let's put <laughs> let's put ours in a clown outfit. Good idea. Um, I mean, this could have gone terribly wrong. Absolutely. But I, I think we're we're back again with the white with the white dinner jacket with Roger in this one. With oh uh, yeah. And I, and I, again, Roger pulls that off so well. Yeah. Him and Christina look uh, fantastic together. Oh, yeah. um um in and he, when he's got that dinner jacket on he he does look amazing and i think the setting um in in india looks you know with him and that white dinner jacket i mean it just i don't know it just yeah. frames him nicely yeah i, th I think the, the 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 setting of of uh, you know, of india really works in that kind of uh, that look as well yeah uh yeah mm. yeah I'm just trying to think of some other memorable bits in that. Yeah, I know. I can't think of anything from Octopussy. <laughs> oh my God, that's funny. Yeah. Well, yeah. A View to a Kill. A View to a Kill, yeah. Um, Roger's, Roger's uh, swan song. Yeah. Fashion wise, it just, I do like the sort of the track jumpsuit top that he wears. Uh, when him and Patrick are s snooping around the um, the horse table, you yeah, know it's got no, kind of the, the white piping on it. Looks kind of cool. Oh yeah, yeah, another one. Yeah. Um, ah, got it. He just you know he's he's rocking the white that white tux again, but I just don't think it looks as good in this film on him as it does. And sort of again the taupe suits and stuff like that. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's a little bit kind of um, a bit too generic, a bit too casual. Yeah. Uh, there's maybe not, a, it doesn't seem to be a, as much thought on the on the clothing on this one. You know, so many people upstage them, I think, you know, with Walken and uh, Grace Jones and, you know, everyone just looks so good. I mean, this really is, was meant to be a, a, a more of a modern film. And yeah. only sort of held back by Roger's age. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So definitely not Roger's finest hour, fashion wise. No, I, I'd agree with that. I'd agree with that. So, so, so looking back at the Roger era, then, uh, what, what was your what's your standout look? I'm guessing you're going to say eyes only. Okay. Yeah, I think so. And uh, you know, I mean, as we're just sort of winging it here, um, um, and just you know, free forming. Um, uh, uh, these these films is letting it rip a little bit. I, that's the one that as I started to talk about it. I realized how many great outfits there are in that. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. I think if I had to have the wardrobe from one film, that would be it. But I will say that I do think that Roger looks his best in Spy, and there's something wildly fun about Moonraker. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm with you on all that, but I'm I'm actually going to have my, my particular strongest look for Roger is back in Live and Let Die. All right. So I know, so I know I'm uh, going to be a polar opposite with you on that one, but uh, <laughs> I, I just, I just everything he wears in that thing in that film, I think he looks, he looks the business in. So is it, it the clothes or is it him though? Do you think it's like just because he's still young and? Um, I just think everything that he wears in that kind of suits his look uh, or, or what they were trying to do. Um, it could be to do with his age, of course, 
but uh, I, I mean, an honourable second place for me would be for your eyes only, because again, from everything you've just said there, I think the more I think about that film, the more I realise there's some strong um, moments when he looks at his at his best. But I, I still think uh, Living That Die edges it for me. Got it. Right on. Well, hey, that's that's. I'm going to pay closer attention to Live and Let Die's fashion the next time that I, I throw that film on to see what you're on about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So next up, Mr. Dalton. Yes. And straight out of the gate, I think that the whole kind of um, Rock of Gibraltar black outfit is such a striking entrance. Yeah, I, I do think. too. This might be my favorite entrance of any Bond. I mean, well, hang on a second. I mean, Sean, that's a whole nother thing, right? But, you know, um, um, he does look great. He looks fit and very believable as a spy. Yeah, I'd go along with that. You know, it's interesting with Timothy, a lot of people kind of give him a hard time. But I remember, you know, when this first came out, you know, my, my mother was... You know, as far as Tim Timothy being sort of a, a heartthrob for women, and I remember my mom really being into like that whole uh, Royal Shakespeare Company, BBC theater, like uh, uh, no offense, but like stick up the butt uh, uh, British yeah. actor. You know what yeah. I mean? Uh, you know, with, yeah, with taking it. themselves yeah. very seriously in sharp contrast yeah. to we Americans. Um, yeah. You know, and like that real kind of like you know. Not a lot of not a lot of sense of humor here, and yeah. I think some of the clothes, some of the suits. He looks really good in in some of the earlier scenes in the suits when he's meeting with M and whatnot. I think I think Timothy looks great in this film. Yeah, I agree. Um, I agree. Uh, I think all, all the all the way through it, he looks he, he looks uh, pretty badass. T totally, and even some of the stuff that's dated, like that sort of puffy leather jacket and real thick sweater that he's got. Um, you know, uh, when he's in Vienna, um, it's, it's still, it still looks good. I mean, it looks good on him. It's, you know, a sign of the times. I mean, I just think that, uh, I know, think the fashion you know is, what, John? I must confess. I really like that look. I really like it. it. Well, I, 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 know know to, I know what to get you for your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know what you mean. It does look a bit dated, but I still, I still rock that look. I think it looks good. Uh, you, you know, they, they, uh, NPL, when they updated a lot of their, you know, they did a whole Bond inspired line and yeah. they did the, sw the sweater, I believe, I hope this is right. They did the sweater from this film and I was like, God, who, who is going to get that? And then I saw a couple photos on Instagram of people who got it and it looked great on them. I was like, yeah. wow, man, it's kind of just modernized just a tad, but wow, I would have not have thought that the designer's at NP will go, okay, here's what we're going to do. Remember that sweater from Living Daylight? <laughs> we're going to charge $500 for it. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. And uh, I saw it and was like, damn, that looks great on that guy, you know? So what do I know? <laughs> <laughs> but I think, uh, you know, the, the Tangier bit where he's got the kind of light, oh, yeah. the lights, the light suit, that, that works really well. Uh, yeah. I I can't think of any particular bits in this film where he, you know he doesn't look good in any in his outfit. Yeah, and it um, just really lends itself to the character, to the film, to the genre, to Fleming. You know, yeah. uh, I think this film is is you know a plus, ten out of ten. You know, it's yeah. as good as if you if you don't like this film, I don't. I mean, this is Bond. Yeah, I, I wholeheartedly agree. Wholeheartedly agree. Yeah, it, 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 it's Bond, it's Bond all over, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then... License to Kill. Ooh, I'm going to let you go first. <laughs> okay. Um, I love the morning suit, actually, uh, on the, on the pre-titles. Mm -hmm. I think, I think it, get, it, get, it looks really good in that. It's a, it's a look that we've never seen Bond in before. Um, when we when we go a bit more traditionally um, sort of uh, tuxedo clad Bond, it's obviously very very similar feel to the previous film, but obviously the, the the hairstylist here was a little bit lacking, I think. 
which isn't his fault really, right? I mean, he sat down in the makeup chair and everyone gives him a hard time with the Dracula thing. But you know, that was probably not his call. He wasn't like, here's what I want you to do, darling. Can you just yeah. slick this back, put some Aquanet in it? I mean, there, <laughs> there can be a hurricane and that, that hair is not moving anywhere. Yeah. Um, it just didn't, didn't work. But in all the other scenes where he's like swimming in the water or whatever, um, where he's a little bit more ruffled, I think he looks good. He looks cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you there. I think this, it's possible there's an element of going a little bit too casual in this one at times. Yeah. Uh, especially the the um, the the bits in, um, oh, God, I'm trying to remember the scene now, uh, at, at Hemingway House, where uh, with, the, with the kind of blue jacket yeah. and kind of trainer, almost trainer's kind of look. It, uh, it, it just looks a little bit sloppy, I think, in places. But again, yeah, it's, it's super casual. Um, I'm guessing yeah. that, you know, given that it's Key West and uh, yeah. and it's the Florida Keys and and I mean, it's so hot there, you know, it's yeah. uh, makes it difficult to wear anything at all. They were going awesome. for some sort of tropical look, but I know what you mean. Um, it's a uh, it's a little disheveled. Yeah, yeah, possibly, possibly. But, I love uh, I love like in some of the scenes, though, where. Um, he's got like the wedding suit. You're right. He looks really cool. Um, in his wedding tux at the beginning, you know, lighting a cigarette. Um, um, there are some publicity shots as well of him with just like a blue button down on and the two girls behind him and a palm tree. Um, um, uh, it's a great, he looks really good there and kind of this like his, his, I like his clothes, but it's almost like he's lived in them. You know, they're not like, you know, yeah, perfectly yeah. pressed, you know, uh, uh, photo shoot, fashion photo shoot. So I, I, I like, yeah, I don't know. I like, yeah. I like my Timothy in this one a little, little lived in, a little worn in. Yeah, I, I think that's a fair point, actually. Um, because the, the more I think about, it, I mean, I'm a, I'm a, you know, a big, unashamedly big, big Timothy Dalton fan. I think, mm. he, you know, he, he was, he was terrific as Bond. But I think. Looking, looking back, if there's anything that's missing for me or slightly lacking is maybe the, the wardrobe of the time just doesn't seem strong enough. It seems a little bit casual. But I think yeah, I take your point as well as, you know, the climate in Key West isn't going to, you know, um, akin itself to more tailored fitting fitted clothing, is it really? I, I spent a summer there in college working gas and boats. And uh, let me tell you what, summertime in, in Southern Florida is, I mean, you know, you don't wear, you, you want to wear as little as possible. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> I mean, it is hot and humid. So I, I think that's it. I'm just thinking of it. It was an interesting choice of location coming out of the tail end of the 80s. Um, but I do like some of the fashion. I love some of the stuff that Davi wears, some of his jackets, and love that pink shirt he's wearing. Oh, oh yeah. um, you know, so I think there's definitely it's definitely a sign of the times. But I don't know. There's something something kind of charming um, about some of the the fashion choices in this film. I don't know. It puts a smile on my face. Yeah. No, I I, I don't disagree. So out of the two uh, Tim films, which one which one rocks your boat as far as daylights? <laughs> Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it has yeah, to be. Yeah, same, yeah, same here, same here. I think that it's just, a, just kind of a. I think it's um, maybe because it's got that European look, but it's it's a very, very it's a bit of a, it's a stronger look, isn't it? I think. Yeah, totally, totally. It lends itself to that sort of European uh, espionage thriller. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So moving on now to Mr. Brosnan, and obviously he's uh, kitted in his uh, Brioni uh, outfit for 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 the for Goldeneye. What's your thoughts on this one? Yeah, you know Pierce is so pretty, you know, and good looking. Not necessarily, I wouldn't call him handsome yet. I liked him when he got a little bit of age on him. Um, yeah. um, you know, these it was a much needed change. Um, um, and uh, uh, I think he looks great. I really do. I think he looks good. He looks so good in a tux. Yeah. Um, I, the Brioni is not necessarily my cup of tea. Um, yeah. I'm a much more of a, a British tailoring guy. And has right. nothing to do okay. with Daniel. Because yeah. just my body type, you know, I'm kind of tall and lean. And, and that lends itself, I think, to British tailoring. The, the okay. sort of the more square, boxier, for lack of better words, 
I'm sure there's a much nicer way to say that uh, cut of, of Italian tailoring. Is it yeah. something that I gravitate to? So, you know, I think he looks great and I think Pierce well wears it beautifully. Um, but I got to admit in hindsight, the Brioni's not my favorite, yeah. even on, yeah. even on Daniel, um, which yeah. we'll get to. Yeah, no, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Any particular sort of standout moments for you with, with GoldenEye? Ooh, um, I got to go. I, the, it, him in the tux. I mean, I think he's, you know, the, yeah. the man uh, uh, looks incredible in a tuxedo um, yeah. and a suit. Uh, uh, I, I'm, I, I like the things he wears that I could never wear. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Yeah, um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a couple of bits for me. The um, when he's on the on the manticore with it, there's this kind of harks back to Rogers' era, I think, when he's got the the um, the blue the blue jacket, the the um, mm. oh yes, the, yes, the blue yes, shirt and gray trousers. I think there's a little bit of kind of classic looking Bond uh, on that bit, and I think um, obviously the uh, the Aston Martin bit where where he's, he's a bit more casual there, but he, he's donning donning the cravat. I'm not sure about that that sequence. Yeah, I, I I would love to try to rock that one night just to see like <laughs> how how serious I could take myself. Um, <laughs> under what condition do you wear that? You know, uh, very there's very few conditions, like, <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, like either too much gin or you've got a lot of money. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, maybe a big combination of the both, I think. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, Rosin just, again, not unlike Lazenby, he can really just wear a suit, you know, uh, beautifully. And he looks good in some of the more, you know, the more jumpsuit sort of like uh, sneaking around and stuff. I mean, he, he just looks, he looks fantastic in clothes. I'm not crazy about that sort of safari get up at the end of the film. Um, yeah that doesn't quite work does it yeah it's just it just looks a little dated to me um yeah um i I prefer like he's the guy i definitely want to see throw a punch or a judo chop or judo kick or something (laughs) um in a suit yeah yeah keep this man in a suit yeah i can i can see why he he, he just he's he's, as you say just such a good looking fella that he can pull that off can't he in the suit yeah 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 completely completely so tomorrow never dies then next up i think this is oh this is my favorite i think brosnan looked so much better once he got a little bit of age on him Mm -hmm. and you know if i'm going to pick something to talk about in this moment the scene where paris comes back to the hotel room and he's just sitting in the chair and the and the the tux shirt kind of rolled up a little bit with the shot of smirnoff and the gun that is as good as James Bond can possibly look, including Connery. I mean, that is up there with apex Bond look moment. Yeah. Um, I, I he looks so good in it. It, it, it I, it's upsetting. Um, <laughs> I feel like I having recently watched this film too. I feel like it's a the fashion of the film has aged well. The look of mm-hmm. the film, like you know, at the Carver Meteor launch party. Everyone looks beautiful. I'm not looking at it going, wow, that dress is dated or, you know, whatnot. No, no. Um, I, I think this is my, probably my favorite Brosnan look. I mean, even the, you know, the, the blue linen shirt on the bike and stuff like that. I think he looks. Um, yeah, looks- you see, I, I'm a little bit less keen on the bike bit. I think he looks, again, a little bit, I, I know, obviously. Uh, to cash. Yeah, yeah. I know a suit's got obviously gonna look out of place, but I think he looks a little bit too cash in, in that in that sequence. Uh, got it. Uh, but um I know yeah. a sequence you're gonna love. I know it for sure. And that's the opening sequence when he's got that puffy leather jacket. Yeah, do you know what? I'm just about <laughs> to say that. I've just discovered I've got a bit of a leather jacket fetish. Yeah, I like, think so. I think yeah, what's going I- on here. You know what? I didn't. I didn't know that existed, John. So I've just, <laughs> just discovered something tonight. But yeah, I do like that jacket at the start, and and the, and the, the belt he's got on there. I think that looks. Oh, good. that belt is just. It's just. Yeah. It's tied off, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I do like that, and I also like the um, the, the 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 brown kind of trench overcoat he's got with the Q scene in Hamlet. Oh yeah. I think he. You know that that's that's like a more hair. Um, 
uh, brown tailored jacket. I think he looks really good in that. Really yeah, he, he looks really fresh in that scene. You know, I, whenever I watch that scene, I look at him and you can just tell Pierce is like loving being at work that day and doing that yes. scene with Q. I mean, he really is gushing and, and enjoying himself, you know, m- more so than anyone who's ever played Bond. Yeah, I, I, I think so as well. I think so. He, um, he just beaming, isn't he? Yeah. I also love the the when him and Wei was it Wei Wei Lin Wei Lin God I should know yeah. this right um, Wei Lin are on the boat uh, uh, kind of getting ready for the final act yeah. in, their, in their black jumpsuits and checking yes. the guns and whatnot yeah um, I was yeah. in a, yeah yeah I, yeah I, I was going to say yeah. that works that works really well doesn't it yeah totally I was I actually went on a boat trip to that location and we were there. And the, out of nowhere, the craziest storm came. There's only been a couple of times in my life where I thought, this is it. Like, this is it. We're not, I'm, you're not getting out of this. And that was one of them. And I jumped into the water right before the storm came. I asked the guy, because he was like, this is the Bond. And I said, no, the, I'm talking about the Bond Island. And he goes, no, 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 no. There's another Bond film uh, that was filmed right here. And I was going, oh shit, it's Tomorrow Never Dies. And so I was like, can I jump in the water? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you got it. So I jumped out. Everyone in the boat was like, what is this guy doing? Like, why did he just want to jump out of the boat right here? But I had to swim around, you know? And oh, wow. Insane storm came. And uh, I didn't think we were going to get make it home. <laughs> oh, so wow. anyway, whenever I see that theme, scene, I think about for about the next hour and a half, I thought I was going to die. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Could have used that black jumpsuit. <laughs> um, anyway, so I, I dig this one. I think Pierce Pierce looks great. Yeah. Overall, this is getting a big thumbs up from me. Yeah, again, I'm with you. I'm totally with you on that one. So moving on, the world is not enough. Um, what do you think? There's a particular look I like on this one, where is the the in um, Baku, and he's got the. The cream linen suit with the blue shirt again. I'm a, I'm a bit of a fan of that one. I yeah. think that looks good. Uh, I don't know if it's as well dressed as the previous film, mm. but um, that's that's that 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 particular um, blue white suit combo seems to work for me. The cream cream suit, I should say. Totally, I like that. Is my favorite as well. Um, it. it, it you know, everything else to me in this film, it, it's beautiful and he looks great, but it looks like he's being outfitted for a film to me. Yeah, he, yeah. It looks like he's, you know, there's a stylist involved, whereas in uh, Tomorrow Never Dies, it feels to me more like, you know, this is what a spy would be wearing under these conditions. Um, and, yeah. But you're right. The cream suit is, is fantastic. Yep. Yeah, again, again, I'm com- totally with you on that one. Yeah. Uh, I- I think uh, everything you've said there is, the, is I go along with. The tailings very, very put together, very smart. He's you know always looks one hundred and ten percent, kind of like uh, a Craig Inspector as he comes out of the chair, you know, and he's running around with the gun like he looks like he just got out, you know, got picked up his dry cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's one of my favorite suits that Craig wears to the shark skin. But anyway. Uh, um, this one, I don't know. There's it just there's nothing about it that really stands out to me. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's that's a fair point. Uh, I, I think it's all it's all quite generic, isn't it? Really. Yeah. In, in terms of in terms of the styles. There's definitely a, a blue linen thing or an overall linen thing, but a blue linen thing that's happening with his shirt is buttoned down as well. So this is two films in a row we're seeing blue linen button downs. Um. Uh, ski ski jumpsuit, yes or no? Oh, the ski jumpsuit, yes or no? Um, I'm going to say no. Yeah, likewise. Uh, it, it doesn't work when it's an all-in-one like that, I don't think. It's, it's uh, I just, no, I'm not keen on that look. I hear you. I mean, would you, I mean, we're so knee-deep in Brioni suits. Do you actually own a Brioni suit? I don't. I don't. Neither do I. I, I. I totally. I totally know the look that you're meaning, but I. I, I don't have one. No. Yeah. Got to be careful what we say publicly. 
<laughs> Indeed. You know, let the hate mail begin from Rioni. <laughs> um, um, totally. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't know. Do things get better in the next film? I don't really know. I don't know if they do or not. I, I, I mean, at this it. point, is anyone uh, uh, thinking about fashion? I, it's not evident, is it? It's not no. evident. Um, I, th- I thought he looked great in the fencing outfit. Yes, yes, I'll give you that. Yeah, 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 yeah. He just he just pulled the white that white suit off well. I also think he looks good in the tux. Um, yeah, you know, um, him and Hallie look really good together. I don't know about acting together, but certainly good looking together. Yeah. Um, not not crazy about the the opening type pre title sequence with the the. I don't know the jacket and whatnot. Uh, it's very, it's very bland, isn't it? It just, yeah. It's just kind of a bond in beige, isn't it? It doesn't really work. Uh, I mean, if we're if we're gauging it by what you own, I definitely don't own anything. I don't know that I own anything from Pier, the Pierce era, as far as fashion. I know like there's been, you know, with the ties and whatnot have recently from the films have sort of recently come back, and um, a lot of people are big fans. I just don't. It just doesn't take dressing like Pierce Brosnan doesn't take me to Bond. It doesn't bring me bring out that sort of boyhood fantasy. I think I mean, or, or, or steep within, you know, when they came out. But I think certainly with the Pierce ones, the the, the fashions were very much of the moment, weren't they? And uh, and I, I don't necessarily think that uh, that style w- w- is as timeless as some of the others are. Uh, no doubt about it. And, and, and speaking of it, let's just move right on. <laughs> let's just, let's just graze through real fast. Uh, 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 the, the fashion of, of, of dying of the day, because now we're getting into while everyone's probably really here. Um, Casino Royale, what were your first thoughts when you saw Daniel? My third, my first thoughts when I saw Daniel was they've made the wrong choice. Oh, you're one of those guys. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it. I mean, don't get me wrong. It, it, it didn't take long before I was uh, firmly on board with Daniel. But when I first saw Daniel, I thought, no, I think they've got the wrong man. Yeah. Um, I do think he looks good in. I know it's very, very brief in the in the uh, in the pre-titles. Um. But um, when I first saw the, you know, the the parkour scene with the with these uh, kind of Hawaiian type shirts, that, 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 that kind of very very gaudy shirt, I thought, no, 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 that's not what it's about. That that's that's not the look. So I, I just got that shirt actually. Um, okay, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and I'm gonna wear it tonight when I watch Live and Let Die. Um, <laughs> uh, holy shit! Yeah. Oh god! Um, yeah, um, I, you know, shirt I, I got <laughs> my favorite shirt ever. Well done. <laughs> I just got it. Uh, compliments of uh, Royale, um, and uh, I got to admit, I, I, it's. I put it on and I put like a, 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 a like a white tank top underneath it and just buttoned a couple of buttons. And I was kind of like, you know, man, it is an odd looking shirt. There's no doubt about it, but I could totally see like wearing it and like cruising through an airport or something somewhere. Yeah. I don't know, like yeah. somewhere warm in Mexico or whatever. Right. Like yep. I, I, it is, and it's a strange choice to go, here's what we're going to put Vaughn in. What is it, arguably probably the greatest scene of all time. Um, you know, with him running around and kicking ass, what's even stranger is kind of the, uh, the, the shirt that he's wearing underneath it, but it's, it's a, it's an odd choice, but, um, all quickly corrected when, um, when, you know, he puts on the tux, Jesus, that moment, let's just get right to that moment. I mean, he looks incredible, um, yeah. in the tuxedo when totally. he finally, I don't know, makes that transformation um what, what let's have some fun with this what were your thoughts when he came out of the ocean the little you know nut huggers 
Um, I mean, that's a little, right? I mean, it's like, I don't know. That's a European thing. You guys are over there and there's banana hammocks. You know, like, I mean, I, I, I don't think he should have been in board shorts either. Don't get me wrong. Um, yeah. But it's a little like, you know, I don't know. I mean, there's Bond basically coming out in boxer briefs. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't know about that one. I still don't know about that one. Is it too much uh, on the nose, as it were? <laughs> made, made, made you feel it. <laughs> made you feel it, did? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know about that one. This I know it's, show is going right is, down. I love it, it. Not, oh, it, this is good, I, man. This is great. <laughs> I know, I know it's popular with the ladies that that oh man. they love it man you, your girlfriend um, your wife you throw yeah. this is the this is the one they always want to watch and we've just got to, to, the, to the bottom of it <laughs> to totally totally but I, I i don't know about yeah. that one i don't know about that one for me yeah yeah uh, it, it's it's it is what it is um you know I, this this does have some great fashion and i wish it would fit me like the the uh, the sun spell blue, uh, blue polo i've ordered that shirt several times and it just like the bicep that it just it's too high that shrinks no matter what size i get no matter how i have it clean including dry clean i can't make that shirt work um, um but you start really to see uh, daniel's influence right you know his say so coming in um yeah. and um I, I do think he looks pretty fantastic i love him when he's with mathis out on the balcony in the sweater i think casually he looks really good there um obviously the tux he looks incredible um um, um I, I do what, what was it what was the i'm trying to think of the um um when he um uh i'm not a big fan of when he gets off the airplane in the bahamas that that sort of linen suit looks like yeah. it's a it looks like you know the talking heads or something <laughs> yeah, it, it looks it it's a little too stop making sense for me it's super baggy and it's not a good look neither is yeah needs that shirt underneath you know, yeah. um, um, but that again might be a sign of the times. It looks, it's starting to look dated to me. Um, yeah, that, uh, yeah. I hadn't really thought about that, but I, but I, I can picture that, and I, I see what you mean. It doesn't, uh, that that doesn't quite work, does it? Pants all still have that boot cut, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, um, but I do love the blue rugby shirt that he wears at the end. I think that's really cool. Yeah. And then I think honestly. It might be Daniel's finest moment is at the end of the film when he's just in a pair of khakis, a crisp white shirt, and the blue uh, 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 shawl collar uh, cardigan, you know, yeah, um, he's yeah. on the phone. He just, I mean, that's just such a great look. Yeah. I, I would have never have put cardigan and Bond together. But, never. But, but but that does work. He, he, yeah, it's it's probably his strongest look in the film, isn't it? I mean, I know my favourite scene uh, in terms of um, sartorially, and that's the very very last scene, the uh, the 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 classic. The name is Bond, James Bond, in that three piece. I love that scene. So you like Craig and Baron uh, Baroni? Well, I just think that that again it's 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 obviously a thing for me for the for the three piece i just love that full waistcoat look got it all right three piece and puffy yeah. leather jacket <laughs> yeah 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 that's, that's, that's the takeaway here folks for those it's of just... us for those people who are still listening <laughs> yeah leather jacket and three for, piece. for the guy uh, and his yeah. dog that are still listening to this podcast <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I need you to make notes, please. You're going to be quizzed later on this. <laughs> oh, God, I love it. I'll tell you something we haven't done, John, is we, we didn't uh, go go back and go back to your favourite Pierce uh, oh, look. Jesus. Uh, 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 favourite Pierce look. I'm going to go with, um, obviously, the, the tuck shirt. Um, um, uh, I think, you know, I think to, to be able to just wear the tuck shirt and it still looks stylish, is that's a huge feat. Yeah. I, I, I love that. I mean, I think any Pierce in the suit looks great. You know, he looks great in a suit, period. I would not want to see Daniel in a suit that much. Um, yeah. Do you so, have a particular favorite, favorite film? Um, uh, uh, favorite Pierce film? Yeah, for, 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 the, for the look. For the look. look. Tomorrow Never Dies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm with you on that one. So we're yeah. in agreement on that one as well. 
Yeah, um, uh, totally. So now let's move on to what I think is one of the greatest looking films fashion wise of all time. And that is, uh, that is um, Quantum of Solace. Um, I think, you know, Daniel having the victory of this film, um, uh, of this, you know, sort of throwing people wiping the egg off their face who said, you know, blonde isn't Bond or whatever the hell it was. Um, um, I think that uh, he looks so good in everything in this film. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, well, it's it's kind of well documented that this isn't one of my favorite films of the series. I'm, uh, I'm not a great fan of Quantum. However, I've got to say that Daniel definitely looks at his best in this film. Yeah, I think uh, everything he wears looks good, and I think you know Daniel as Bond looks at his best in this film as well. Yeah, I mean, when he comes over that. In the, in the teaser trailer, slowly coming over the hill, the desert hill, in the Tom Ford suit. I mean, he just looks incredible. Looks yeah. incredible on the airplane. He'll even looks incredible when he, in the opening title sequence, when he opens up the trunk and he's just all dirty and disheveled. Um, uh, I just, I, and then there's the Harrington, which, you know, everyone talks about, and we shall talk about it here today. <laughs> Um, I think that's the coolest Daniel looks. Everything about at the end of Quantum and the the busted up Harrington when he's, um, um, yeah. you know, uh, confronting Green. Um, I, I just think this film is classic, timeless, and I think it's it's also quite fashionable, especially with what some of the Strawberry Fields is wearing and Camille is wearing the little orange dress and stuff like that. I think it's just a wonderfully put together film. Uh, uh, fashion-wise, yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't disagree. As, as I say, I'm, 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 I'm not a great fan of this particular one, but, um, but, in, but in, ter in terms of the visually uh, and, and the tailoring-wise, is it, it, it's got to be up there with, with one of the best. Mm. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, even when he's walking through the desert, and you know, I mean, most guys at this point would pretty much give it up, but he's got his jacket buttoned, and he still looks. There's just something about it. He looks uh, truly amazing. Yeah. Um, um, so, I, yeah, I could talk about this film all day and all night. Uh, any, any standout moments? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I got to go with the Harrington. Um, yeah. I, I love the Levi's that he's he's wearing in the motorcycle chase. I think they're really cool. Chuck -a boots you know, seeing that for the first time. Oh, Hang on a second. Oh God, how dare I? The scene and when he's going to, to Mathis's place in Italy and he's on the boat and he's just in those the Tom Ford sunglasses, the Chris yeah. White shirt, the the, the shawl collar, uh, you know, uh, sweater with the sort of you know khakis that are cut a little high and the chucka yeah. boots. I mean, he's just so relaxed and so cool. I love that. That's that's my standout look. Yeah, do you know I, I'm with you again on that one because when I when I think of that film, uh, that th that's the kind of the overriding memory I think I have a, a, of him on the boat going to see Mathis. It, it, he just looks looks the business there. Totally, yeah. I mean, a absolutely beautiful. Um, Skyfall, I, you know, it's interesting. I, I love this the look of this film. I love a lot of the fashions of this film. I I, I know some people. You know, you hear a lot about all of a sudden the suits are cut too too tight, too small. Um, what are your first thoughts when you think about the fashion of Skyfall? Um, this kind of mixed bag for me, this one. I, I do think some of the fashion works, but I, I am one of those who thinks the suits are a bit tight in this mm. one. And, uh, you know, they, they just look like they've uh, shrunk in the wash in a few, in a few of them. Mm -hmm. um, and it kind of spoils the look a little bit. Uh, it, 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 the jackets, well, and trousers just look a little bit too tight on them. Got it. Yeah, they do. For me, for me. Yeah, yeah I get that. I mean, I think that's a that's a valid point. I I, I love the 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 gray suit. Um, a lot of people I don't know have said that they didn't. It's they thought it was ill fitted on him um i about love the, the the gray tom ford suit in the beginning i love the midnight blue tux that he oh, wears yeah. it's just stunning 
um, um, you know, one of the iconic pieces for the people who were into the clothes that everyone got was the Billy Ray pea coat. Yeah, um, definitely. You know, I mean, everyone bought that jacket. I've never had a piece of clothing on, and and I was in New York City, and I don't know, twenty people. Billy Ray pea coat. Yeah, you know, I mean, just everyone right. knew, it, especially from the leather strip band around the, the the back of the neck i think it was a good dead giveaway but um no i thought i i really i really like a lot of the pieces from this film um yeah yeah, yeah absolutely but those suits do did look a little too small mm. no doubt about it any any sort of standout moments standout moments skyfall um Let's see here. You know what I thought was really gorgeous piece again. I could never wear it. Is at the very end. You know the 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 overcoat. Um, yeah. I thought yeah. lo looked really cool. Um, and then you know what I really loved is the um, oh god, I'm blanking on the name. The Skyfall jacket. The one the the Barber Heritage jacket. Is that right? Is that the name of it? The Barber jacket he wears at Skyfall. Oh, for the final uh, fight. I love that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I know the uh, one you mean. I love uh, that whole look of him out in yeah. the Highlands with the the yes. Crockett and Joan boots and yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the 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 in peel uh, sweater and the barber jacket and the God I'm drawing I I used to know all the I just love that look you know yeah, and yeah. I never get to wear yeah. stuff like that because where I'm at at 72 and sunny every day of the year. And, yeah. and uh, you know, whenever I go somewhere cold, I'm so excited about being able to wear clothes like that. Yeah, I do like that look as well. And it hadn't really been seen before in a Bond, so it was a bit, a bit of a different look. Yeah. Uh, the, the barber suit, but the barber jacket rather. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's definitely where you live, you should have that. That's definitely, uh, yeah, maybe they make one in leather. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we'll add a little extra cotton in there. We'll get it done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Totally, totally. So, and, and moving on to Spectre. So, what's your overriding memories? I, I love, I love this. I mean, I love the I, everything from the NPO uh, uh, cashmere sweater he wore at the press conference. I love the yeah. the white dinner jacket, Tom Ford dinner jacket. That's a, obviously a nod to Goldfinger. Um, I don't own it, but I've heard great things about the suede jacket, um, the ma a matchless jacket, I believe. Um, oh, yeah. The Cuccinelli uh, blazer tie combination looks good. Too bad he's wearing J. Crew boots. Um, uh, you know, I, I have it's it's honestly gotten to a point where it's a problem, and I need to like hide them for myself. The Tom Ford Snowden sunglasses. Oh, yeah. uh, have been on my head ever since this film came out. Um, um, love uh, a lot of different shades he's wearing in this. Um, again, some of the beautiful sweaters. Uh, big fan of the sort of Steve McQueen uh, throwback on the poster with the sort of the bullet look with the mock turtleneck and whatnot. Um, yeah, I think this is a good, he looks good in this film. I think the, the, the clothes are really, really beautiful in this film. What do you think? Yeah, I, 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 I think they're, they're an improvement on the previous film, personally. Um, the, there's, a, there's, there's one, but the, the particular, um, there's, a, there's a brown, brown suit, brown tie combination that he's got when he's with Madeline uh, towards the end of the film that I really like. It's, it, it kind of harks back to me from the, Tangier scene with, 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 with yeah, with, that's that, that match, matchless, I believe. Yeah, yeah. so uh, many people I, will correct us on that, but I'm almost positive. Yeah, that's a really nice look. Yeah, I, I do like that. I do like his the whole look at the, at the start of the film at the pre titles when he, he obviously, uh, you know, takes the mask off and he has it just, you know, just when he's walking along the rooftops and that, 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 that's that suit there, I think is really good. Um, I, th I, I think the look, the, the look is a little bit more classic than the previous film. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's cool. It's definitely distinctive. And I'm surprised you haven't mentioned it yet, is the three piece he's wearing um, when he is in Rome. 
um, when he goes to uh, God, what's Skiar's wife's yeah, name? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 Nike. Um, um, but you know, he's got that. It's very like the Italian with the the metal bar through the 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 the, the shirt. Yeah, you know, like like he just looks like an Italian mafioso kind of guy, yeah, yeah. and I think it's beautifully stylized. Yeah, mm. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm. It's funny enough. I'm less keen on that look. Um, really. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, do, I, I, I don't really like one with a tie pin. I don't, I, I don't think that's. I was just, I was reading an article earlier, funny enough, and obviously he's got, the, he's got a tie pin in No Time to Die, and, it, and it, basically this, this article was saying it's the first time he's got a tie pin since Goldfinger, which is not obviously true because he huh. has one, one, one inspector, but I'm not really, I don't really think um, that's kind of like a Bond look, the tie pin. Got Maybe. it. Maybe it's a UK thing. I don't know. I tell you what, I'd wear if it let me kiss Monica Bellucci. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I, I, yeah, it's an interesting look for sure. Um, yeah. um, you know, some of it, sort of the the Tom Ford uh, polo shirt that he's got in America. You know, I mean, it's cut really short on him. I mean, the bottom of the shirt is above his waistline. I'm like, that always bothered me. Um, but I think I, I really, I like the, you know, I, I'm a fan of this film. This is a film more so than probably any of the Bond films that I get a lot out of when I watch. And, and a lot of it has to do with, you know, enjoying, you know, the way that Daniel Craig is dressed. Um, I think he looks cool in this film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. I, I mean, I think... I think this, they've, they've had more thought in the last, you know, certainly the Daniel era, about the about the tailoring and the, the you know, the the color choices and the materials. I think I think it's 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 a, it's a lot more thought about than maybe it has been previously. Totally. And I think obviously that reflects the times, I guess. Totally. So, 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 so looking ahead, and uh, I know we'll we'll eventually get to it to no time to die and some of the you know the the stills and the footage that we've seen from that so far um what what do you what do you think about what we've got coming up as far as the clothes go i think there's some interesting pieces on there um I, i'm i've i've made a few purchases here and there but i'm uh proceeding with caution i'm keeping an open mind and i want to see some of the fashion choices uh how they play out in the film you know, um, there's a lot of cord pants, cord suits, cord duster jackets. Uh, I, I need to see how that all works, but it's not stuff that I would uh, kind of think, okay, well, that's Bondian. You know, it's yeah. a bit of a head scratcher in some of, some of those cases. Um, and I think some of it looks good in, on, in the film, perhaps on him. I'm not so sure how, how good the, you know, the, 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 the blue sailing, sweater with the wide slit um you know when i see that sometimes i go huh that's interesting yeah. um so i don't know what are your thoughts when you see you know all the footage that we they, we've had to mull over for the last couple of years <laughs> um yeah. what, do you, what, what are your thoughts on the fashion of no time to die um yeah there's some some interesting choices i think i think the um that, that kind of they're going for that lighter, lighter linen suit, you know, with, with the, the DB5 chase. Uh, I'm not sure about the, um, you know, the, the, the braces kind of hold up look that the few scenes. Yeah, I'm not a fan of, of braces at all. Yeah, yeah, I just, I think that looks a little bit odd. Yeah. Um, it might may, may, you know, make more context when, once you see the film, but I'm not sure about that bit. But um, what I've seen so far, I like. Interesting. Yeah. And that suit is not linen, by the way. It's cord. Oh, I beg your pardon, cord. Right. Yeah, okay. It's, it's made of, it's a cord suit. Bond is wearing, a, it's a really fine, baby fine cord suit, actually. Oh, I a see. Friend mine, right. A okay. friend of mine had one and I kind of got to touch it, you know. Uh, it wouldn't fit me, but I saw it and I was like, oh, it looks really cool. I just, you know, Bond's wearing a cord suit in Italy. Ah, right. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but we're getting ready to find out. 
I hope. Yeah, well, yeah, well, we're, we're getting closer and closer. Yeah, we, so. I think so. I think so. Um, but I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to see how these clothes. I mean, I love clothes. I love, you know, it's part of the whole Bond fantasy and, and escapism for me. I really enjoy, um, you know, the fashion and, you know, collecting some of the pieces. And I enjoy having a, a little bit of Bond on, you know, throughout my week. I'll pick something and I know it's Bond and you know, a lot yeah. of people now, especially who I work with, sort of know what I'm doing and tease me about it. That's okay. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So, so looking back at Daniel's run, have you got a particular favorite look? Uh, I'd say Quantum. I'd say the clothes yeah. in Quantum. Look, he looks great in them. Yeah. Um, um, as far as, yeah, I just think that's, there was something special happening. And, you know, Daniel had, had, you know, a lot of, I think, say so. And it's the first time we're seeing all that Tom Ford, which I think was really exciting. Um, yeah. Uh, ushered in sort of Daniel's era reign as Bond. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. What about you? What is, what, what's your, what, what's Daniel's apex moment? Yeah, it, it's the same for me, actually. For it, 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 not, not from a film perspective, but certainly from a, from a, from a look perspective, it's quantum. Uh, uh, I, th I think he, ju he just he just looks at his best in that one as well, and, yeah. and therefore he carries the he carries the clothes off best, with, with, you know, by by looking the best in that film. I think totally, absolutely interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. Have you got well, anything, anything further to add, John? About no, that? no. I just thank you. This was your idea, and I just wanted to thank you for picking up the phone and call me. I haven't really. Uh, this is the first time I've I've sort of uh, had the opportunity to talk bond in a long time and was kind of, you know, it's been nice to sort of revisit and think about these films and think about the fashion of these films. And um, it's such a major part of it. And, you know, it's a lot of fun. And so I just yeah. thank you for, you know, suggesting that we do this today. I, it was a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Um, it's it's so, just so good to, to, to relive it. And uh, you, you kind of, you know, Play, play back scene after scene in your head, don't you? And uh, of uh, it's, uh, it's there's so there's so much to the whole genre, isn't there? So yeah, it's, and it's it's an interesting it's an interesting way to connect with somebody. I feel like I get to know, you know, you start talking about like clothes, even music to a certain degree, and you kind of can go, okay, well, this is the kind of this is this is the type of Bond fan they are. You know, yeah. and everyone's so different. And I celebrate that. I celebrate, you know, the fact that there aren't, you know, we don't all agree on everything. Um, and the fact that you're like live and let die, you're like a puffy leather jacket. Uh, <laughs> and a three piece suit. And a three piece yeah. suit. Uh, yeah. and now I know, now I know, you know, I know Dobson much better than I did, you know, an hour and a half ago. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't really know about those things much. I don't think you knew either, to be honest with you. Yeah, so no, it, I don't think I I I did, there was certainly a pattern there, wasn't there? There was certainly a trend. Totally. But, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, you know, the, the there's just, I mean, it's all been discussed and dissected at this point in the Bond community. And, you know, it's kind of fun to go back and have the opportunity to talk about things like this that, you know, I certainly don't get to talk about too often. I mean, I, as someone who's always on about the music, it's, it's fun to sort of like, okay, I'm jumping out of the, uh, the, the closet and, uh, confessing my love for you know the clothes as well yeah yeah totally totally right on well brian thank you so much man i really appreciate it it was fun doing this uh everybody in the jbr world uh thanks for tuning in yeah no problem at all thoroughly enjoyed that john that was great fabulous absolutely so just, about, just about wraps everything up for this particular episode i've been brian dobson i've been jw we'll see you next time James Bond Radio will return. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. Hope you enjoyed the show. Good night.